Okay, Algebra 2, today we're going to learn how to go from standard form, which is that ax squared plus bx plus c, into the vertex form, which is what we've been learning from, ax minus h squared plus k, etc. So this is kind of a tedious process. Um, I know these notes are hard to break down. I can see this, even as a math teacher reading this, I'm like, okay, cool, that's nice, blah, blah, blah. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and like show you what matters the most is this right here. So we're going to basically be able to find the vertex, um, which is that HK. Remember, vertex is the HK, which is this thing right here. And when we find the vertex based on the information we put in, we can then create the vertex form. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So on number one, you ready? Um, let me get my ink selected to blue. You're going to start off by, first of all, trying to internalize what this is saying up here, which is, the h is negative v over 2a, comma, f of negative v over 2a. Lord, child, that's a lot. So we're going to go down and talk about that. So what we're going to do on these problems is you need to label your a, which in this case is negative 6. You need to label your b, which in this case is negative 12. We don't have to label our c, but y'all, for these problems, if I were y'all, I would just get into the habit of labeling as much as I possibly could on every single one of these problems. Because the more you practice this whole A, B, C, A, C thing, the better you're going to get. So negative 6 times negative 9 is positive 54. Even if we don't use it in this problem, y'all, you'll be using it in other problems. So let's go ahead and start. So we're working with this up at the top. Uh, there's my blue ink up there where it says negative B over 2A. So we're looking for negative B over 2A. So I'm going to find that. What does that look like? Well, negative B. That negative is always going to be there, y'all. When it's included in the formula, you've got to show it. And it just so happens my b is also negative, which gives me two negatives in a row, which we know that will change to, uh, what's it called? A positive. So then my 2a, oh, good little thing. Let's put our 2a over here as well, too, which our 2a is negative 12. And so now I end up with a negative 12 on the bottom, which gives me positive 12 on top, negative 12 on bottom, which means... This evaluates to negative 1. So I have found for my points, I'm at negative 1, comma, something for my H and K. So I found my H, I found my K. Or I'm going to find my K next. I'm going to switch over to the purple, actually, to find K. That way it's easier to read. Um, well, not that much easier since my handwriting is stinky, but you get it. K is going to be this. So when I find this number here, this H, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the original equation and plug it in. Now what it wants me to do is just plug it in. So I'm going to plug it in. F of negative 1. If y'all don't know what that means, it means instead of writing X, you're going to write a negative 1 every time you see an X. So there's my negative 1 squared uh, minus 12 times negative 1 uh, minus 9. That's not that big of a deal. Just plug it in and go. Um, so what do we have here? So I have my f of negative 1. Let's do this one line at a time. Make sure we're evaluating this. Let me check my work. Negative 6, correct. I put the negative 1 here. The negative 12 is there. The negative 1 is plugged in for x. Minus 9. Got it. So we double-checked our work, and we're good. Now I'm going to go through and evaluate what I can. Uh, one, negative 1 squared is positive 1. And so then positive 1 times negative 6 is just negative 6. And then... Minus 12 times minus 1, negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. So, so far, so good. And then minus 9. So it's negative 6 plus 12 minus 9, if you type this all up on Desmos or use your head, whichever one works, uh, comes out to, what does that come out to? Negative 6 and 12 is 6, negative 3. So we have now found our negative 3. Okay, now that we have found our negative 3, uh, we're going to go ahead and write our vertex in the proper place. So the vertex goes here. I'm going to switch my ink to black. Negative 1, comma, negative 3. So that's our vertex. Now, it doesn't have our vertex form here, but I want to go ahead and solve for our vertex form so you can see how this works. So now that we have our vertex form, we basically remember the vertex form is that thing that is uh, this equation up here at the top. It's this one. Um, there it is. It's this one right here. This is the vertex form we're looking for. So you can see we need an A, an H, and a K, which we have all three of those. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and write my vertex form. F of X equals 
A is the first one, which in this case, we use our original A, which is negative six. For those wondering where I got it from, that's right up here. Now we have our X. Our X for our H, remember this is H comma K. Uh, this is a minus one, and we know the X's always lie. Don't forget you're squared here. I see a lot of y'all forgetting your squares, and the K always tells the truth. And presto, you have yourself how to do this. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h, which in this case is negative 1. And then does it have a maximum or minimum? Does it have a maximum or minimum? So there's multiple ways to figure this out. But what I would do is I would do a quick sketch. And what I would do is I would take my vertex and I'd go negative 1, negative 3, which here's my negative 3 here. And then here's my negative 1 here, right? And I end up having this point here. Now question, my a is a negative. My A is a negative, so is that going to go up or down? We know that negative means we flip out, so check it out. This means you're going to have a maximum. Why? Because when you're reading range, and that's what maximum min is dealing with, when you're reading range, you go from the top all the way to the bottom. So where are we coming from? Uh, we have a maximum because it maxes out at top, right? Uh, and it's coming from negative infinity, and it stops at negative 3. So... That's how we solve this. I'm going to put the other examples in other videos.